At the start of linear programming, it will appear to just be uh, graphing inequalities. So we're going to be drawing accurate graphs where uh, we are going to draw on uh, accurate lines and identify the region either above or below the line or to the left and right if it's a vertical line um, that is satisfied by uh, an inequality. And we're going to be drawing several of these inequalities onto the same graph. And then we're able to then identify a particular region which we're going to call the feasible region. So the region that is satisfied by all of those inequalities. That is what linear programming is going to appear to be at the start. But linear programming um, is actually a particularly useful technique that allows you to either maximise or minimise problems. And it allows you to identify um, if a company has, uh, say, it, it makes uh, chairs and tables and it wants to know uh, how many chairs and tables would be the most profitable. So as part of that, it would take into account the material costs. It would take into account uh, the hours that it takes to make uh, chairs and tables and the particular machines that it needs to use okay, to make them. So a lot of these factors come into play uh, that can then affect the solution. And the only way to do that is to use linear programming to solve it. And we're going to be approaching this from a graphical perspective at the start. Okay, So we're just going to be looking at it from a graphical perspective and then we're going to bring in the context later. Okay, Because once we get this bit sorted we can focus our attention on the context and what that's all about next. Okay, So linear programming and actually accurately drawing lines. So the first thing you're going to need when you do this um, is either graph or squared paper and definitely a ruler. Okay. Now unfortunately I don't have graph or squared paper on the board so um, in when I do it I'm probably going to be doing it fairly roughly. Okay. So I'm going to have a little bit more uh, difficulty with this. I do have a ruler and I will be using that on occasion um, but uh, when you do this you're going to have to do this accurately. Okay, So let's say I write down uh, a few inequalities and we consider what they're going to look like. Okay, So let's say we think about uh, y is uh, greater than or equal to 2 and let's look at x is greater than 3. Let's just look at those two to start off with. So, as I said, I am not going to draw this accurately to start off with, um, but you can do it if you've got some graph or squared paper. So what would y is greater than or equal to 2 look like? Well, y is greater than or equal to 2, we're going to draw the line y equals 2, so here's the line y equals 2. Okay. And this would be looking at the region above that line. Okay. Now I'm not going to shade in the region just yet. Let's look at this one next. x is greater than 3. So x is greater than 3 would be a, a vertical line at 3. Now because it's greater than, we're going to draw those with a dashed line. So if they're greater than or less than, so they're a strict inequality, you draw them with a dashed line. Okay, there's x is equal to 3. Okay, so let's leave it with that for the moment. Now, if I'm going to be shading the region, then the region here, y is greater than or equal to 2, is anything above the line 2, and greater than 3 for x is anything to the right of that dashed line. So the problem here is that because we're drawing multiple inequalities on the same graph, if you start shading in the region that you want, the problem is, you know, if I do a smaller version down here, so we've got that and that, 
If I start shading in the region that I want, okay, I am currently only at two inequalities. If I had five or six inequalities on the same axis, then it becomes really difficult to determine what region you're actually considering. Okay, so when we are linear program using linear programming, uh, the convention is to shade the area you don't want, because that clearly identifies the region that you do want, because it's the region that is completely unshaded. Okay, but I am not going to shade it in this fashion either. So, because y is greater than or equal to 2, I shade the region I don't want. And this is the type of shading that I would use. That's all it is. OK? So I use some dashes like that, and that identifies that I want above the line. For x is greater than 3, I want to the right. So I'm going to shade the region I don't want. Okay, and now you can clearly identify that it is this region up here that I want, okay, that satisfies both of those inequalities. The region that satisfies the inequalities that you have is referred to as the feasible region. Okay, because any answer that is within that region is feasible, is possible. OK, um, now different values within your feasible region might give you um, different possibilities of whether there is a maximum or a minimum value that uh, we're going to consider later on. OK, but that is how we want to graph our inequalities and we want to make sure that we clearly identify the feasible region either by say, actually stating feasible region, or sometimes it's abbreviated to just FR, or sometimes just even R. Okay, But as long as it is clearly identified and you follow the instructions of what they're saying in the exam.